Greetings everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Lady Starfire and today I'm here to talk to you about altars. Now I'm going to say on the front end there is no real right or wrong way to set up an altar. How you do it, you know, for you is and it works. That's all that really matters. Because once again, I'm here to help you on your path. For those of you that don't know anything about setting up an altar and is, or wanting to learn, then I'm going to do my best to teach you and show you. So I have a basic altar set up here, and I'm going to explain each piece to you. Now, it is set up right now from my viewpoint, all right? So I'll try to fix it around for you, you know, as I go through things. So the two most important candles on your altar is your goddess and your god, all right? Because we we need balance and having the male and female is important all right and the god and the goddess is those that we call on we worship doesn't matter if you're calling them by name if it is simply god and goddess um father and mother um you know sun moon wh whatever works for you whatever feels right to you in your path all right so then once again this is what's important all right so the first thing that you know well i'll tell you what i'm gonna go through all the items first so once again we have our goddess and our god candles we have a chalice all right so and i went over these in your witchy tools but we're going to just show in here so this holds wine or juice depending on what you want to use but, you know, it is something that in circle, as we pass it around, you know, it's a may you never thirst, my lord or lady. Okay. Uh, we have our pentacle plate, right, which holds our cake, cookies, bread, you know, whatever you choose to use in your circle. But it represents the bread of life. Okay. Now, the important aspects for actually casting a circle is. All right, we're going to have a bowl that will have water in it. We have a container of some sort that has our salt. All right, I like to use sandalwood sea salt. We're going to have our incense burner, uh, your uh, durable, whatever word you want to use for it, but it is something that simply holds your incense. All right. Uh, once again, I like to use sandalwood when I'm casting a circle. Sandalwood is cleansing and protecting. All right. So nasty entities don't like sandalwood. They don't like sea salt. So what else would you use if you want to keep them out? Right. So um, I don't like stick incense for casting a circle. Now, I'm always teaching you to think outside the box. If that's all you've got and you need to cast a circle, by all means, use it. And it really don't even matter what the scent is, whatever you have, it helps to, you know, in your cleansing and consecrating. If you don't have sandalwood sea salt and you don't have some sandalwood oil, go grab some salt out of your kitchen cabinet if you have to. You know, in a pinch, when you got to do it, you use what you've got. All right. Always remember that's very important. I like these cauldrons. All right. So they're just great. They've got a handle to them. You put the powdered incense in it. You can use charcoal and um, resins, you know, whatever you want to use. But it's great because as you walk around your circle, you can bellow out the smoke. Okay. Now, we have an athame. Now, your athame is, as a general rule, a double-edged blade. Best to make it not sharp because you don't want to accidentally cut yourself. Because if you do, you have to bury it in the ground for a year and a day. Now, this is for actually casting your circle. You know, your atome is used to direct energy. It should always feel like an extension of you. If it doesn't, it's not yours. Okay. Now our bowling is something that you may have or may not. Um, it's generally a white handled uh, blade. It doesn't have to be, doesn't have to look like this one. Uh, but you want it but you want one that is single edge because you're going to use it to trim your candles, chop up herbs, cut string, you know, different things that you may need to do while you're in circle. All right. So this one needs to be sharp, but only on one side so that you can cut things without cutting yourself. 
Same thing goes here. If it draws blood, you must bury it in the ground for a year and a day. Uh, a wand is something that you don't necessarily have to have. It is used in certain rituals, and it's used in place of anathema. Um, so, like, if you're going to be out at a park, you cannot carry a blade. They're not allowed, especially in state parks. So you take a wand instead. Um, this one is kind of, you know, interesting. Uh, it was handmade beadwork by some Cherokees that I know. Um, it even can uh, double as a scourge if you like. Um, now, for people that want to, you know, they only have one altar. So you don't have altars set up on all four walls. And you want to represent all the elements. Then, you know, a simple way is with candles. To represent them, you can set them in a, a little group like I have over here. Um, you can, you know, take and set them based on the directions. Make sure if you're going to do it that way that you have them in the directions. Now, um, in the tradition that I follow, our altar is always on a north wall. Uh, if you like yours in the center, by all means, have at it. I don't personally like one in the center, mainly because, well, one, that's where my cauldron goes, but also because if I am having circle, whether it's at um, our pagan church or in a coven, then my back is always to somebody, you know, and I've got to constantly be turning circles and stuff. And to me, it's just very distracting. So I personally, you know, like the tradition that I follow, which is the altar set on the north wall. And then you, you know, everything would be set up like I have it here, you know, from me being on this side of it. Like I said, I'll rearrange it so that you can see better what it looks like from your side as we go through this. Um, if you have, you know, if you've got a room that you can dedicate, then that's great. You know, then you can have, uh, so if I'm facing north here, then I'm going to have my yellow candle over on this side on my east altar, right? And then south, west. And then, of course, I have my north here. Not necessary to have a green one, you know, if you're set up in the north because everything else is already here. You don't even necessarily have to do these because when you have your water in your bowl, that takes care of your west. The salt is earth. Your incense, all right, and your, when you have it in here and it's burning, gives you your fire and air. You know, plus you have your candles burning, which is another type of thing. So it's not necessary to have these, but if you like to do that, or maybe you want something else that represents the different elements, there's nothing wrong with it. It's fine. Do it. Okay. Do what feels right to you. That is the most important thing when it comes to an altar. All right. So to show you what the setup would look like, hopefully you can see it well. From your point of view, and does it matter which side these are on? Nope. We can switch them over here. It does not matter. Okay, so it's whatever feels right to you. Uh, I personally like it when my husband and I are doing circle. I will stand on, on the side with the god handle, and he's on the side with the goddess. So once again, it's equal balance crossing. So now we're going to get all of our little things placed over here. Once again, you know, we have these candles that we can use or not. It is totally up to you. Oh, one thing else that we have here is our candle snuffer. So very important. We talked about this in the color correspondence video that we snuff out our candles. All right. So it's like if you have these burning to represent your elements, when you're done, you're going to snuff each one out. Snuff out your god candle. Snuff out your goddess candle. Real simple. So, these are just all things that are going to set here on your altar. Um, you can arrange them however you want. There's no right or wrong way. Of course, you're going to want the handles facing you for everything so that you're not reaching across or reaching down and then you end up grabbing the blade as opposed to the handle. Okay. So, hopefully, this makes a little more sense in the way that I have things set up. 
um, I'll include pictures and stuff so that you can kind of see it a little better as well. But you want everything in a working spot for you. So like your salt, you don't want to have a container like this. Have you a pretty little dish that has a lid. Make sure it has a lid because the salt will absorb moisture and you don't want that. Now, after you have completed your circle, now, oh, by the way, once you do your circle and you have everything going, that's when you do your spell work, your ritual, whatever. All right. After you close out your circle, you dismiss your guardians, everything, you know, snuff your candles. All right. That's the last thing that you're going to do. These are your last ones to snuff out. You can leave your charged water setting on your altar if you have an altar that sets up all the time. Uh, that way you always have some charged water handy if you need it. Or you take this bowl and you go outside your door and you pour it across your doorstep. So now you have this charged protective water that you have now you know, poured across that doorstep to add extra added protection going in to your home. Uh, I hope this makes sense to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the comments. Uh, feel free to contact me, you know, in any other way close by, stop by the shop, uh, or you can, you know, email me. Any way is okay. I don't mind answering questions. That is my job here is to help you. And so that's what I do is I try my best to explain. Sometimes somebody still has another question. So email me or comment below because the comments below may help other people because somebody else may have the same question and they see that you ask it already and that I've answered it. And so, you know, it may help them. So all of us work together and help each other. Remember, this is not the only way. This is how I teach it in my classes. So for those of you that are taking my classes, when you get to the chapter on setting up altars and stuff, Hey, feel free to refer back to this video because it's going to help you out in an actual visual as opposed to just in the book. So, yes, I do have a book that is my year-long uh, first-year classes. It's called A Year and a Day, Learning the Old Ways with Lady Starfire. So, if you like it, you go to my website at charlottesmysticalweb.net. You can order it there. You can come in my store, whichever. I hope this helps you in your altar setups. Um, if you do have a room where you can set up other altars, on those altars, you're going to put things that represent that element. So, you know, put a candle. I like to set a jar candle on it. You can use pillar candles. You can use smaller candles so that you, you know, and then you just replace them. A bowl of water on your west altar, uh, feathers, or anything that represents air to you. Remember, think outside the box. It's not just what everybody else says it is. What is it to you? So, you know, set things up on the other altars if you have them. And if you don't, that's okay too. All right. So, um, I'm also planning on doing one on ancestor altars because I've had a lot of um, questions about them in my store and otherwise. So, I'm going to try to get one done on that for you as well. Um, is there something else that you'd like to know about? Please leave me a comment and let me know. Um, that way I can do my best to try to get the videos out for you and answer the questions and maybe more detailed than what I can just type. So I hope this helps and I hope you all have wonderful rituals. And until the next time, hey, share this with somebody that may need it, okay? Click that subscribe if you haven't and I will see you in the next video. Blessed be. Mm -hmm.